Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Shannon, I am the Wisdom Wench and in today's video we are going to make poultices. We're doing something that I've never done before and it's something I'm really really excited to try. So I'm going to make two. I'm going to make a dry one that you can kind of mix up as and when you need it and I'm going to make a fresh hot poultice as well. So come along with me and let's make some herbal medicine. So firstly, let's start with what is a poultice? Poultices are really old forms of medicine. They have been done for years and years and centuries and millennia. The definition of a poultice is this. A soft, moist mass of material, typically consisting of bran, flour, herbs, etc. applied to the body to relieve soreness and inflammation, kept in place with a cloth. It's, if you've ever watched kind of fantasy TV shows, you've probably seen a poultice before but it's a mass of herbs they're applied to the skin or to a wound and then they're wrapped up tight and they're held in place poultices serve a number of different purposes and you can make them for lots of different types of things certain types of poultices are made to go on open wounds and they're meant to promote wound healing and drawing out infections i'm not going to be making one for open wounds today I'm making topical poultices that are to be used on a number of non-wound based skin conditions. So the dry poultice that I'm going to make today, I'm going to be using oats, which I'm going to grind down into a flour. I'm then going to be adding lavender and burdock root. The idea of this poultice in particular is it will be a really dry powder. I can take out what I need as and when I need it and you can mix it with Coconut oil is a common one, or you can mix it with just water. People sometimes actually mix their poultices with milk as well. That's a really common one, and that's quite a historical one as well. All of these herbs I'm looking at for treating irritation. So I have quite a bit of scarring, and we're on our way to a heat wave. And as we really start to heat up and I get too hot, I get a lot of inflammation and redness and, and um, soreness, particularly around my scars. So I want something that I can put on there that's going to be really soothing, really cooling, and it's going to aid in reducing any inflammation that comes up, any redness that comes up, and very cooling to help the itchiness part of it. Then the hot poultice that I'm going to make, I'm going to make fresh and try today. I'm making the hot poultice for joints, joint inflammation in particular, and joint aches and pains. At the moment, in my general everyday day job, I work in retail. So I'm on my feet all day. And because I'm currently in the end section of my foundation herbal course, I'm working on my final project. I'm so close to being done, but at the moment I'm spending hours at the computer. So my knees aren't my friend right now, but I'm going to be making a fresh herbal poultice and we're going to tie that onto the knee and we're gonna try that one today. Poultices are still used. They're a pretty easy form of medication or medical topical thing that you can make and we're going to be making two that are fairly simple to make that you can kind of build off of and you can change the recipes as you like so as you see me make the poultices in the later section of the video it will just be me talking over what i'm doing and why i'm doing it i want to touch on a herb that is really commonly used and that's comfrey Comfrey's common name, or most well-known name, is Knitbone. Some of you have probably heard that before, especially if you're into like fantasy TV shows or fantasy books like I am. You've probably heard of Knitbone. Knitbone is Comfrey. Comfrey has been used historically in poultices for, for joint pains, for arthritis, especially for back pain. And modern science has shown us that it's it's quite toxic if you ingest it and it's not really recommended for open wounds though it still does have and a lot of herbalists will still prescribe it as a kind of a topical ointment for inflammation on joints i'm not using that today i'm replacing it with calendula a really easy swap to make something that's quite accessible for me but it's just a, a cool little plant thing to know and something that you might want to do a little bit of research into so in our dry poultice today we're gonna be using oat flour as the base. It's got the tacky consistency when it's add, got water added to it to make it that paste that I'm looking for, while being something that is quite natural and soothing as well. 
I'll be adding to that lavender. Lavender has a long history of being used as a wound healer and has been used for conditions involving inflammation and joint pain before. As I mentioned before, burdock root. Burdock root is a really interesting root. You can do quite a lot with it. It's a very versatile plant and it's really good at acting what it needs to act on. In this case, I'm using burdock root for its anti-inflammatory properties, but burdock root is also used in a lot of skin conditions, specifically things like psoriasis, acne, and eczema. So I know it's going to be gentle on the skin, and I know it's gonna help with any redness or swelling that comes up in this dry poultice. So we're gonna have a go at that. I started by measuring out one cup of oats that I then blitzed in a blender to turn into a fine flour. I added all of this to a bowl and put it to one side while I went and got the burdock root. I measured out a quarter of a cup of burdock root and attempted to do the same but it didn't blend. I put this aside and left it for now before going and get a quarter of a cup of lavender. I added this to the flour and made sure to mix it really, really well together so that there weren't any clumps of lavender anywhere. When this was sufficiently mixed, I added it all to a clean, dry, sterilised jar and compacted it down for use later on. I'll come back to the burdock root later, I did eventually find a solution for it. And that is how easy it was to make the base of this dry poultice to go in the jar. This would also make a really lovely gift for someone and it was really easy to do. Now onto the fresh poultice. I started with this little bit of ginger here. What I'm using is it's called a garlic plate and my friend bought it for me, but it's got these spikes in the middle to help you grate the ginger. I grated that into the pan. I added quarter of a cup of flaxseed. And then I added a quarter of a cup of marigold flowers. Well, over a quarter of a cup. I put all of this in the pan and added starting with a quarter of a cup of water, but I quickly realized that wasn't enough and added another one making half a cup of water. As you'll see at the end, this has a pretty gelatinous <laughs> consistency, so I think in future I would have added a little bit more. But I kept it on the heat and I kept it moving so that it didn't stick to the pan and it didn't burn. I also didn't really want it boiling. I made sure that it didn't stop moving and it combined in a few seconds. I took it off of the heat and added it to a bowl to let it cool to one side. This was really hot and as it's going on your skin to avoid burns, let it cool for a little bit first. Here comes the moment of truth. I'm gonna put the paste on my knee because my knee is what is affecting me right now. Putting this underneath me because it's easy enough to wipe clean. On the instructions I have for it, it's just put it on the area, put a old but clean tea towel or a bandage over it and then sit and keep it elevated for 20 minutes. So that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I have left this in a bowl to the side to kind of cool off because it was quite warm and it's kind of doughy. I think it's meant to be uh, runnier than that. I don't think I used enough liquid, but we are going to put 
put this, look at it. <laughs> We're going to put this on and see how it goes. Um, so I'm going to cover it over the knee. I'm going to put one on top and then I'm going to try and tie it using a second detail. So the idea is I'm using just what I had kind of two hand at home. This stuff is so, whoop, this stuff is so weird. Okay, that's staying in place. It smells primarily of ginger. Ooh. And I think the flax seed is actually doing really well to keep it all in place. Ooh. Is that enough? I don't know. I'm gonna just spread that out. So we cover it with a clean but old tea towel. And I've got a second one that I'm kind of folding into a strip. Kind of the point of all this is I want to show you like it's all makeshift. I've got no specialist equipment. Actually, that feels really nice. That does feel really nice. It says at least 20 minutes, but I'm going to be honest, I'm going to watch an episode of Merlin. So it will be at least 40. I've pre-made myself a cup of coffee. We were thinking ahead and I will see you when it's time to clean all this off and I'll talk about how everything went and I did come up with a solution to the burdock root problem so we'll talk about that in just a minute. But sit back, relax and I'll see you in a second. Okay so I am back at my herb cart now. This is where everything we've used today lives. And I've taken off the poultice from my knee, the hot poultice, and I purposely put it on one knee and not the other. I wanted to compare and see how I felt after the hour. The knee that had the poultice feels amazing. I've still got the aches and pains in the other knee that I had anyway, but the knee that had the compress, I've got no aches, I've got no pains, it feels just fine, it feels absolutely fine. I've washed off the compress now and it just feels really good. So I'm definitely gonna be doing that one again. I'll probably do that a bit more, especially if I'm spending more and more time at my desk at the moment, which I am. The poultice came off my knee really easily, didn't stick to it at all. Most of it was actually stuck on the tea towel. So I gave that a quick wash and before that gets properly washed. And all of the leftover bits of poultice so the stuff that was in the bowl and even the stuff on the tea towel, I just went and put in my compost bin. It's all natural ingredients. So why not go back to the earth? But I'm glad I did the hot poultice. I feel like I've really learned something and I will be doing that one again. But let's quickly move on to the powdered poultice, the one that I made and put in the jar, which we have right here. So this is just the oat flour and lavender now. The burdock root wouldn't, blitz in my blender but to be fair it's not a very good blender and I couldn't find my hand coffee grinder so you know sometimes things don't work out that's absolutely fine but what I have got is I've got my burdock root in here and what I am going to do with this is when I want to use this instead of mixing it up with just water I'm going to make a decoction using the burdock root now a decoction is when you get a root, it's normally done with roots, you don't really need to do it with leaves because they're quite delicate, but roots are a little bit more hardy and you need to get a bit more out of them. With a decoction, you'll put it in a pan and you boil it and you keep it boiling so that everything seeps out of the roots. It's different to a tea because with a tea, you'll kind of put the boiling water over it and you let it steep. The temperature doesn't change, if anything, it's gonna get lower, but with a decoction, the temperature is staying the same because you are keeping it boiling you are drawing a lot more out of that and you can let it reduce a little bit so it almost goes a little bit thicker. To use this, I would make a decoction and then mix the powder with the decoction to make a paste and put that on the affected area. Another thing you can do with this, kind of just as it is, is you can put it in a little muslin cloth or a muslin tea bag and tie that all up and you can just throw this in the bath. The tea bag itself, not this. This will clog up your drain. But you can throw that in the bath and it will be like a whole body soothing and calming thing. The main thing I want to get across with these kind of videos where I try something for the first time is this is how it happens. It doesn't always work out. Sometimes it does. 
the hot compress, the hot poultice, worked out beautifully. The cold compress, well, the powdered one, didn't work out with the burdock root, but we found a way around it. And what I want to emphasise is, it doesn't need to work out first time. You can try, you can adapt, and something great will always come out of it, even if it's just you learning something. So please go give poultices a try. There are lots of different recipes online for all kinds of ones, and I'm definitely going to be doing another video about poultices at some point in the future. I'd like to do one about bruising and open wounds as well and kind of ones for infection and things like that, but that's gonna be a little bit down the line. I'm definitely gonna keep playing with and testing poultices and I'm really excited. To be honest, it's the kind of, med kind of medicine making that really made me feel like a wizard. It feels very ancient to me. <laughs> and I don't know, the poultice making that really made me feel like, it really made me feel connected to our history as herbalists and the past herbalists and I really enjoyed making this form of medicine. So thank you for being here with me today, thank you for coming along with me while I tried something new and please let me know if you've made a poultice before, if you're going to try it out, let me know, let me know all of these things. Please like and comment, I really do love hearing from you and seeing all the messages is just one of my favourite things. Subscribe if you feel called to, I'd love to have you here again. Thank you so much for being here with me today, and I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>